Welcome one and all, this is The Ancient Journey, on today's journey, The Cursing Stone. But before we get started, don't forget, if you enjoy the video, please give us a like and a share and subscribe. And don't forget to turn on those notifications. And if there's a story out there you'd like to see us turn into a video, drop it in the comments section down below. Now let's get started. In the 16th century, Scotland had a real problem. Scotland was a rugged and lawless land at the time, and the country was turning into a full-time battleground between rival families. Those who lived on the border between Scotland and England had it especially rough, and those families looked to raiding and marauding against other families as their only way to survive. The problem wasn't between the Scottish and the English governments, and it wasn't about religion. The problem was kinship. Families that shared the same name banded together against other families. In the battle for survival, blood relationships mattered. Political ones didn't. The church gave these families a name, Border Reavers. Reeve is a noun taken from Old English which translates to the word raid. Border Reavers were familiar with the lands and the territories. And they were excellent at stealing livestock, robbing houses, and taking prisoners for ransom. The Reavers were basically wreaking havoc, causing mayhem, and if you ran into them it probably made for a very bad day. The Archbishop of Glasgow, Gavin Dunbar, finally had enough. He printed a missive that was to be read aloud in all churches in the Scottish border region. What Gavin Dunbar had composed was a 1,500-word curse against the Reavers. They'd been cursed before by the church, but this time, the wording left very few ways for them to get around the curse. The curse against the Reavers damns them to eternal suffering in the fires of hell, unless they change their ways. And Gavin Dunbar didn't mince words. He cursed their heads, their hair, their faces, their eyes, their mouth, their nose, and he curses them while eating, while drinking, while walking or sleeping. You get the idea. Gavin was pretty upset about the state of things. The curse had little effect on anything going on. The Reavers ignored it and just continued pillaging and terrorizing. It wasn't until King James I of England used brute force to execute or simply remove the Reavers that their reign of terror came to an end. But let's fast forward to the year 2000. To commemorate the broadcasting of the curse all those years ago, an artist constructs a large stone that is to be erected in Carlisle, Cumbria, a border city in Scotland. The stone is to be carved with the words of the Dunbar curse, and the floor is to be engraved with names of the Reaver clans. But soon after its installation, the residents of Carlisle start to question whether the display was a good idea and what of the curse against the Reavers had now been visited upon the town instead. Shortly after the installation of the stone, foot and mouth disease takes hold of livestock in Cumbria, killing almost half of all herds in the town. A fire destroys the town's bakery. A factory in town slows down to the point of massive layoffs. The Bishop of Lancaster dies in office, and the Archbishop of Glasgow dies in office as well. A local boy is murdered, and the local soccer team is demoted to a lower league level. In 2005, Carlisle is overtaken by historic flooding. Houses are flooded up to their second stories. The town is underwater for days, and this is the not the last flooding that Carlisle will see happens again soon after. Town folks start to wonder if they've brought a curse upon themselves by erecting the stone. 
Today there are motions in the town council to remove it, but to this day the cursing stone stands silent. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sharing the journey.